Hey, this is Juliet. We're about to get into The Bachelor, but before that, I want to talk to you about Through the Ringer. Now that the college football season has ended, we've rebranded our Ringer University podcast feed to be Through the Ringer. It is now your go-to place for our weekly wrap-ups of Ringer podcasts titled This Week in Ringer Culture and This Week in Ringer Sports. It's also where you can hear some of our special projects, some one-off stories, and some new shows that we're working on. If you want to hear all of these and get the best culture and sports podcast moments without having to search for them every week, subscribe to Through the Ringer. You won't regret it. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, let's batch. Welcome to the Bachelor Party B-Side of episode four of Ari's season. I'm Juliette Littman, and today I have with me the Ringer's resident Bachelor recapper. If you're reading on Monday nights on TheRinger.com, you're probably reading Roger Sherman. He's a foremost Bachelor expert, perhaps in some ways more so than I, and therefore we've got to talk to him. Today we are discussing some hot topics, including drinking your own pee and Ari's tattoos. Let's get into it. During the group date in Tahoe, they like did fake orienteering. Have you ever done orienteering, Raj? I have never done that. Um, it, it was I was surprised to see that, and I like that the only thing that they hooked up on was uh, the pee thing. Yes. They basically, like, they watched Bear Grylls. They were like, that's all you need to know about survival, is that people drink their pee sometimes. <laughs> that's how it goes out in the woods. I'm kind of disappointed that um, we... Uh, didn't get any Chris Harrison. Like, why can't we, like, we were getting so much of him this season. Why can't we get him in the woods roughing it? Don't, wouldn't well, you have liked to see that? It's much easier to get him to do stuff when they're in LA. True. That's a, a great anything, point. Anywhere else, he, he'll drop in for like a couple seconds. That's say, true. He, he gives the little speech about how there's one rose left. G- but, great point because his time did precipitously drop off this week. It, it ha- yeah, that's his, it, it's harder to get him on a plane. Um, okay, so a couple of things about this pee situation. First of all, let's talk about Marique. Tell us what she said and what and and uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah, every once in a while, there's there's a line that happens on The Bachelor that just consumes my life for the <laughs> next week. And it was definitely Marique who, when confronted with the premise of drinking her own urine, immediately said, "Well, Gandhi drank his own urine, so." Maybe there's some merit to drinking urine because Gandhi did it and he found it nutritional. And so so I just really I had never heard that before. And it's blatantly untrue. Gandhi did not drink his own urine at any point in time. He was not a pee drinker. <laughs> he did not drink his own piss. There was another prime minister of India who did go on 60 Minutes here in America and talk about how he he believed in urine therapy, but he was not Gandhi. It was Maraji Desai, another prime minister of India. Different from Gandhi, different people. Gandhi never drank his own pee, never happened. No pee consumption by the most famous humanitarian in Indian history. Don't you feel like The Bachelor should have clarified that? I I feel like they should have read a little ticker across the bottom of the screen, like, note, Gandhi never drank his own pee. (laughs) Yeah, or like a PSA at the end, like, update, here's here's what Gandhi stood for, and it wasn't drinking your own pee. Yeah, you don't want to defame, like, like great humans of history on your dating show about piss drinking. (laughs) It's certainly not worth it. It's definitely... Also, I hope someone like corrected um, Marik in the like our producer or something. I was like, by the way, that's not correct. Or like, is she still living her life? And probably a lot of people like added her on Twitter. But until I'm this sure week, she found out. <laughs> was she living her life thinking that was the case? It, she was so confident about it too. She was so confident that, and she said specifically, he believed it had nutritional value. Yeah, that was bizarre. I feel like someone one time told her that or like gave her like correct. It's, it's a corrupted memory or something. Who knows where that came from? If yeah, I it's one of those her, Kazam ask. Shazam things. Yeah, I feel like her family probably is embarrassed. Like if, if my mom saw me say something that dumb on TV, <laughs> she would be really upset. <laughs> that That is not the first. If I was thinking of famous pee drinkers throughout history, I would go straight to Bear Grylls. Mm. I would bypass Gandhi and a lot of other famous world leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Grylls could he could be he could be the leader of a small um, woodsy nation. It'd be funny to have him on the show. That's a good point. Like the the people that they brought in to be like the the leads or like the funny part of this yeah. um, date, they're like 
only more anonymous than Lanco the band. They 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 barely moved the needle. <laughs> well, they they probably reached out to Bear Girls. And he said no. And, yeah, and they're like, who's the number two go to surviving in the woods person? And they probably went to the survivor man person, and he was like, nah. And then they were like, we found a person who was a green beret at some point, and that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that these girls knew what a green beret is? Like what that means? Um, it's a hat. Sure. They're probably like, oh, cool hat. Love it. Can I get one? Does it aid in the pea consumption whatsoever? Seriously. I would love to know whose idea that was. Ari seemed a little too into it, so I'm concerned that it was his idea. I saw the apple the apple juice gambit coming from miles away. Miles away. I I, I don't know how any person there could have believed that he was actually drinking his own pee. I, I think my favorite part of it was how quickly they went into the pee drinking. Like they're in Lake Tahoe. They're near an enormous body of, of natural water. There's no need for anybody to consume their own pee out of dehydration. But they acted as if this was like the number one premise of getting lost in the woods. Yeah. And there definitely are are other things that they could be more concerned about, I think, like animal, like bears. They're in Calif- they're in Nevada. They're California adjacent. But I assume that there are, there are bears in the uh, mountains of Tahoe. They, yeah, they kept showing a lot of videos of bears, but clearly there was no bear bachelor contestant interaction no. at any point. They no, kept they're... teasing it like, oh, at some point someone's going to be mauled to death by a bear. And then it never happened, never delivered. But they delivered on the peak. You know, we can criticize it all we want, but that was one of my favorite <laughs> moments of television that's one of my favorite bachelor moments because it, it the question was asked, would you drink pee for love? And first of all, there's no guarantee that actually drinking pee would make Ari like you more. No, and yet several of them were like, hell yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it would make even if that's the kind of thing that like Ari's like, yeah, I it's I can't believe how how much she was into the date or she really gave herself over to it. It's hard for me to imagine that actually would would get him to like you more. Like who wants to make out with a girl who's just drank her own pee? He he doesn't seem even though he is a race car driver, he doesn't seem like a particularly adventurous guy to me. No. Of all the reasons to get into race car driving, my dad does it is like the least cool reason to become Family a professional. Family business, man. It's like just trying to be like your dad and not really so much the seeking the thrills. He doesn't seem like a type of guy who can be wooed by by pee drinking, I guess is my point. <laughs> it all boils back to the pee. Oh, God, gross. Um, it's time to move on from the pee. I think we've exhausted no. this topic. But thank you. Th- I really, when I read your recap, I was like, damn, I didn't talk about that enough. So thank you for coming on. But number two, something else that you mentioned that was a huge reveal, the probably way bigger than Becca's age. Ari has weird upper arm, inner inner bicep tattoos. They're armpit. They're armpit tattoos. Arm, he has armpit His armpits tattoos. armpits are tattooed. Do, yeah. Could you make out what they were? I couldn't. They they were they were dark and they didn't really show it for very long. But they were in the hot tub in Tahoe, and it's very clear that he's got some sort of winged object under there it looked like to me yeah it's like a and, bird or something and like that. It, it it really is delving into his armpit area which i'm gonna be honest i've never thought of that as a place to get a tattoo do you have tattoos i i don't have a tattoo i'm not a tattoo person i don't either but i feel like that's not really a comfortable place to get one and also i don't yeah. really get what's the point is it ta- is it something having to do with his race car career i that could be it First of all, it's the most hidden. It's one of the more hidden places you could put a tattoo. It's right. not revealed unless your shirt is off and your arm is lifted in the air. It's a real hedge. It's sort of like I want to get a tattoo, but I'm not sure I want everyone to know that I have it. E- even more so than like one on like a butt cheek or on your foot. Because like. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost weirder than like. It's way weirder because there's a chance that people will see it, especially if you're wearing it, depending on like your T-shirt. But it, it will never be like really out in the open so it's not even like a cute sort of like oh that's sexy it's just a really bizarre choice it's also a part of the body where hair is generally exists on men sure so great point i i wonder if like first of all when you're getting your armpit tattoo do you have to get rid of the hair first do they just ink over it do you then have to groom your armpit in future to avoid the hair messing with the tattoo? There's a lot of disgusting things about Ari's armpit tattoo that I really don't like. I found it very odd. I think the other thing it really brings to light is that 
I think that we this is the longest we've waited in a bachelor season perhaps ever to see the bachelor without a shirt on. Yeah, it, and, and it's not it's, even a full on like man candy shot. Not that and and no shots to Ari at all. He's a slim, tall dude. I'm you know got a got a great figure, but it's just it's just like a real departure from the typical like shirt off. Here's my six pack presentation of the bachelor. Yeah, it's not like he's like a schlubby dude. No, like it's not like they were hiding this, but. I don't know. I guess it's not his image. His image is like this. I'm semi-European. I'm covered in a race jacket and you will never see my shirtless body image is what I get from him. Usually we also get a lot of like um, the bachelor working out by himself, like in the first yes, episode. Yes. Um, with his Nick voiceover. showered. Yeah. Nick he was literally showering. Nick showered. Definitely got definitely got Ben shirtless because we saw those tattoos like, you know, they all really like work on their six packs beforehand. And Ari, first of all, was a kind of like a last minute ad and he hasn't been in this world for a long time. So I don't know if he ever had a six pack. And again, I don't mean this in like a shaming way at all. I don't I don't care. I think Ari's got a great, great physical stature, but it's just really different. And it just like is another reminder that like this is like Ari is sort of like a weird choice from outside of the system. Yeah. And it's it it sort of delves into the um when we were talking about whether or not Ari is an adventurous person. Yeah. He, he like he is a race car driver, but it's because it's his dad. He gets a tattoo, but he gets it in like the darkest depths of his his upper body that he will never let you see unless we're in a weird hot tub situation. It was a, also it's a large tattoo. It's not oh, like it's big. It extends out from the armpit up to up to the biceps. It looks like it probably took a long time for him to get that. Yeah, I it, it was it was a surprise and. I don't think we'll be seeing Ari shirtless that much longer, even though, even though it's he, he's a fine shirtless man. Well, they go to Fort Lauderdale next week. Oh, so there's going to be some beaching. There's some there's some beaching. There's some some yachting. I think. You know, we'll Ari see. is very Fort Lauderdale. Do you he's think he's not so? my he's not Miami Beach? He's he's like he's up the coast a little bit. He's not know. looking to party in the city where the heat is on all night on the beach till the break of dawn. Yeah, there might there might be some retirees hanging around. <laughs> not quite. Can we send him to Boca? What do you think yeah, about that? He's not all the way up in Boca, but <laughs> he's not in Miami Beach either. He's somewhere in between. Raj, do you have a favorite girl? Like, who's your favorite contestant so far? I've just been overpowered by my crystal hatred. Oh, yes. She's um, terrible. She's a, like, bottom five all-time contestant. Yeah. But I'm. it helps with the hate watching, though. It's so, true. It's I, true. I'm, a big, I'm a big Becca fan. Which Becca? The The one that is notable Becca, and not the other one who yeah old. Becca sorry no problem. for not for not <laughs> pronouncing it as it's spelled Becca <laughs> no well, yeah she's been great i i approve of her and i'm not sure i would say favorite but she's been she's i i've really enjoyed her basically just messing with ari cuz i don't consider ari to ari wants to be kind of a deep person sure but he isn't very much of a deep person so Becca says something that's like modestly challenges him as a human. And he's just like, Psh, this is the smartest woman I've ever met. She's playing it right. She's just like, absolutely. We, we talked about this earlier in the week. Like she is by saying like, I don't need you. She just like, just totally dominant over him. It's, it's, it's phenomenal to watch. I really, I really like it. Where do you stand on Chelsea? The other, the other villain. Chelsea that hasn't, hasn't fully crossed over into villain territory. Not yet. Has she? Not since episode one. Is it coming? Is is there villainy afoot? Maybe. I don't know. They really were setting her up to be hated in episode one, and then Crystal just came on so strong. Just dominant. Just a dominant force. Yeah. Just unlikable in every facet of her existence. There's a lot of a lot we're gonna I'm gonna get into this more next week, but there's a lot of women left who we know nothing about. Do you have a do you have a favorite like nameless woman who stands in the background and you're like, oh, um, you've shown flashes, kind of like the Frank Nilakina. Like there's flashes there, gonna be good. But we don't know yet. I've I've enjoyed Jenna's presence, Jenna. the taxidermy, yes. and uh, no, does she have a ukulele. Taxidermy and ukulele is Kendall. I forgive you though because they're both sorry, both blonde. sorry, and, uh, heart, sorry. Yes, uh, and, apart. Oh my God, yes. And one of them is a creative de- director, and the other is a social media manager. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Kendall. <laughs> yeah, Kendall, Kendall's, Kendall's the cool. creative director who uh, does the taxidermy and plays instruments. It was I, a big I, week for her. Yeah, she but she's probably a little they're both both of them are probably a little bit too out there for someone like Ari. Yeah. He's got a lot of girls with with a, with 
cool personality. <laughs> personality, which doesn't vibe with. Yeah, him. and I just, I just don't think that he can. I don't think he can hang. I don't think he can stick with them. And and Crystal's a Scottsdale girl. Ugh, Crystal, she's horrible. I think he's she's just horrible. I hate Crystal. Like I, I'm actually like I'm gonna start imposing a moratorium on my Crystal hate because it's just pointless. Like let's not talk about this. It's really impressive though. Yeah, it's like if her voice wasn't so hard to listen to, she wouldn't be so bad. I I find myself so when I write about The Bachelor, I try not to be too superficial about it, even though it's the most superficial show, Mm -hmm. and. I just keep having to stop myself from just being like outwardly mean towards Crystal as a human. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I, I, it's, it's just hard. Like, she she is also just awful in all the ways that somewhat justify it to me. <laughs> um, Raj, thank you so much for coming on this bachelor party B side. I know you'll be back. Your contributions from your Monday evening uh, or Tuesday morning, whatever you prefer, recaps are just an invaluable contribution to Bachelor Nation. Thank you, thank you, and. You know, the more pee discussion we can have, the better. <laughs> uh, I will definitely have you back. And I just want to mention on the next episode of this podcast on Monday, talking about episode five of Ari's journey is the one and only Rachel Lindsay. I'm incredibly excited and I'm sure she will be a delight because that was quite evident on television. If you want more from Roger, check out The Ringer on Monday nights for Bachelor recaps and pretty much every other day for more Roger. Again, I'm Juliette Littman. This has been the Bachelor Party B-Side and we'll be back on Monday. 